Welcome, everybody, for another great night of Shutter Talk. Uh, tonight, we've got a great guest, uh, David uh, Hutchison Images from uh, Victoria, and uh, he's uh, waiting in the back room. And uh, so uh, we've got um, a couple of things just to uh, start off at the uh, beginning. <clears throat> if you're going to have a question for David, um, Put a cue in front of your question uh, in the chat, and uh, I will mark it, uh, and we'll bring it up to David uh, to uh, answer. Um, and uh, while you're out there, uh, just make sure that uh, you hit that like button. Uh, it just helps uh, YouTube uh, kind of uh, give the analytics to this little channel, and uh, 
you know, we just want to make sure that uh, everybody's uh, putting their effort in there. And anyway, I just like to say welcome. Francis, uh, welcome, Francis. It's been a while since we've uh, seen you. And uh, Francis has a, a small, well, not a small, but he's got a, a quite a, a photo club uh, in uh, Richmond here in the Minaroo Center. And uh, Wayne, welcome, Wayne. And uh, Wayne's going to be jumping up uh, with us later on. And we've got uh, Tina Pally, another good supporter for, for the channel. And uh, who else we've got out here in the chat? We've got... Uh, Mama's gone detecting in the background. Uh, thanks for coming along, Mama. And we're gonna, we have some of her photos at the end. Uh, we want to kind of critique and give her some uh, uh, help with that. Uh, so, but without uh, further ado, I want to uh, come and uh, start to uh, bring my guest in here. And uh, so, welcome, welcome, David. Uh, there he is. Yeah, all the way from Victoria. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just got to make sure you got your volume on. There you go. You got your volume. Yep. Good. How's that? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. I can really hear you well. Great. So, yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, David, well, thanks for having me on tonight, Frank, on yeah. your show. No, it's, uh, it's always uh, great to have uh, great photographers come up and, and talk about uh, how they do certain things. And, and tonight, you know, the, the topic's going to be uh, business of nature photography. And uh, yes. who better to have than to you? Uh, come along and give us a, a talk. Yeah. But before we get to some of uh, those um, uh, presentations for you, David, uh, I just want to ask for, for the, the guests out there, uh, what kind of equipment do you use? What is your, your go-to equipment currently? Yeah, I've got two setups. Um, so for landscape photography, I use an Icon Z7 and have three Z lenses. Um, wide angle, mid range, and um, you know, mid mid telephoto to 200 mil. And then I have a a 500 f4 VR with a D4s for wildlife. Okay. So basically, okay. two two completely different systems for different things. Yeah. Now, uh, just recently, you also got into drone uh, photography, also, didn't you? I, yes, I've been uh, using a drone for a couple of years now, and just recently got uh, my advanced pilot license, drone pilot license in August. Mm -hmm. Now, are you incorporating any of that into your, your nature photography in any way? Yeah, it, it, nature photography and with commercial photography. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a bit of, there's a crossover. I haven't used it with wildlife photography at all yet. There's different restrictions around that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I use it often with um, yeah, tourism, you know, commercial work and yeah, uh, yeah. with with some uh, landscape photography as well. Yeah, yeah, okay. Now, uh, what's, what's your favorite lens? Uh, you know, for landscapes, um, I really, I really like Nikon's 14 to 30. Um, the, it's a, the mirrorless mm -hmm. Z. Yeah. And the 24 to 70 is great too. Like I use both of those. Um, they work they work very well. They're small, compact, light, um, you know, good contrast. And the nice thing about the Z lenses is that generally they're sharp edged edge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and, and I really like Z7 camera. I, I just, uh, I think it's, you know, it's not perfect, but it's, uh, they did a good job on it for being the first, really one of the first mirrorless that Nikon out yeah yeah uh, it's in a second generation now but i still yeah. have the first generation model now are you finding it uh uh you're using the the mirrorless more than you are with the your previous uh, cameras how 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 was that uh so it far? took a bit of getting used to with the mirrorless you know it's just a it, it's a it's kind of like a it's a video game mm -hmm. <laughs> you know because everything everything's electronic on the back screen and and you get into the menus is all electronic. So it, it's just, it's a different user experience than a DSLR, but I, you know, honestly, Frank, I still, I still for wildlife, I like the feel of a, of a, a nice size DSLR in my hands for, for wildlife. And, you know, when I say wildlife could be bears, uh, birds, uh, and some landscapes as well with telephoto lenses. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's just not exclusively, um wildlife but yeah i love the mirrorless for landscape photography mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it really works well for me and yeah, i know lots yeah. of folks that have started to switch over 
Yeah, yeah, I know. I I have that also, and 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 I basically mm -hmm. got it for video to do do video. Right. I haven't yes. uh, done the the landscape side of it, uh, but uh, um, you know the video side of it is, is it's an awesome uh, camera for that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Both the Z6 and Z7 are wonderful for video. Mm -hmm. Now in the field, um, when you go out and and let's talk uh, into uh, wildlife, uh, what kind of sure. aperture are you running on your camera? What what uh, and your shutter speeds? What do you usually use? Yeah, it you know if there's if it's really really low light, then the widest aperture possible could be f4. You know if it's if it's really really poor light. Um, but yeah, I find for and it depends on the subject as well. Like for for birds. You know, six three seven one for the aperture, usually in and around that range. But yeah, it just depends on the the uh, the, the subject, uh, maybe the angle that the subject's coming towards me at. You know, those different types of things, the wingspan and you know the the, the shape of the subject too. Uh -huh. So, but yeah, for like for eagles, I find like seven one f eight works really good. So, yeah. you know, as an example, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and as the subject gets closer, then I may, you know, if it's a bear or whatnot, then I may go even more of a, you know, F8, F9, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. So, yeah. yeah, it's variable, you know, so I'm, I'm constantly changing the, the, the settings and the, the shutter speeds as low as I can get away with to keep the ISO down. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's just my kind of style is um as 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 low as i can get away with it still being sharp if that yeah, makes any yeah, sense yeah so okay. i don't want to overshoot and too sharp yeah and too too high of a shutter speed and then you lose the sharpness with too much iso mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so the balance yeah oh that the balance is is everything in, in photography you know so it, uh, totally. now uh one of the question is what would you suggest to uh, a photographer to uh, improve and take better pictures, what would you suggest to them? How to improve? Take a workshop. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Hutchinson Images, um, correct? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. And we gotta, um, we gotta promote you, David. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I just did myself. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a good question and patience. Um, uh, so be patient with yourself and experiment like challenge yourself with with new things and try things um especially in that you know in the first couple of years or first year uh, it's different for everybody because people everybody learns at different rates and then there's different ways of learning as well and then the speed of learning um but uh yeah patience and experimenting um yeah, and, and you know, YouTube's got lots of good things yeah, on it, but you yeah. can't beat time in the field. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. like, I put caution to YouTube. I'm not saying don't go on YouTube to go get tips and tricks. I've done it. Yeah. Um, everybody's doing that. Um, but you can't beat time in the field behind the camera. Mm -hmm. Now, the other question I have is, would you suggest to, to somebody new or somebody in a photo club to, to side with a mentor? Uh, to improve their photography Possible. yeah 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 uh, yeah mentorship can be can be a, a good thing private lessons work well for a lot of people too so it doesn't have to be a workshop but often like i'll speak for myself and my business for people that come to me for private lessons they tend to be just starting out and they don't want to be in a group mm -hmm. And I've seen people like make huge strides in like two or three one hour lessons. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, cause it's just focused on them. There's no external uh, distractions from other people. Uh, so that's a way that can expedite learning is private lessons and, and mentoring is basically a version of private lessons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's just for, it's just really, it's just a longer time period and more in depth, a uh, kind of more uh, immersive. Yeah. Um, so, but both both work well. Yeah. Uh, both are also very different prices. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Now, uh, in your workshop, uh, Dave, um, what is the breakdown of, of um, uh, 
males to females. How is, how is that? Uh... Yeah, I, I have a lot of female customers. <laughs> so yeah. um, I would say uh, probably three quarters, maybe 70% uh, female. Um, but, you know, some workshops, it's it's split 50-50. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, yeah, I'd say uh, even just stretching it past workshops that I'd say, you know, 70, 75 percent of my customers are female. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've noticed that, of, too, in photography. Lots of ladies yeah. getting into photography and yeah. they're loving it. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and uh, they, you know, they want to learn and uh, they'll take yep. the lessons to learn. Whereas yep. a man, you know, like we tend to go, oh, I'll just muscle through this and and yeah, uh, you know. that's, that's an interesting thing that you bring up because I actually can sit here right now and I can't tell you the last time I did a private lesson with a man. Yeah, I, I don't even know what it was. It was years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, it's, 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 it's yeah, yeah, it is. So it is something. Yeah, it, it might be the way females learn. I, yeah, I don't yeah, know, but yeah. Um, yeah, generally speaking, females love the private lessons yeah. and then they learn fast. Yeah. And there is there is there is that market for that. I, I know I've Definitely. I've had the private lessons for for the females too, and and uh, uh, and and they they really you know want to learn and know everything to to uh, about the camera about the photography, and and uh, mm -hmm. it's it's just nice to see. Uh, it is. It's great. You know, yeah. So even you know down on uh, for my workshop in Costa Rica was the same scenario. Was there was more females than there were males. You know so. It's uh, it, there is a, a market that uh, the females are really getting into photography, you know, they are. and uh, so I agree with it you 100%. Yeah, so it, uh, but I have um, before we get on to uh, your presentation, uh, I just want to ask the, uh, the people in the chat is there any questions that you have of uh, David uh, right now? Uh, please uh, just enter it in the chat and we'll get David to answer the the question for you and i'm going to ask him another one here um uh now you've got a couple of workshops coming up when when is your next workshop coming up david uh next workshop is april the 10th for long exposure photography mm -hmm. and then in may there's a three-day uh weekend workshop in port renfrew uh, so that's that's scheduled and then there's a five-day workshop in September for grizzly bears, whales, and native culture. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and interesting, just a kind of a side note on that, uh, because you asked me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No. In, in regards to the multi-day workshops, we just, um, my workshop partner, Matt Shannon, and myself, we just negotiated 100% refunds uh because of covid with our tour operators for the multi-day workshops mm -hmm. so kind of like an unprecedented thing but i think it became a necessity in the sense of getting insurance for trip cancellation for covid is very yeah. complicated yeah oh yeah and yeah. i've done a lot of research on that and it's a bit of it's a bit of a rabbit hole yeah. but just a footnote on that that their clients are well protected for deposits and payments on the multi-day workshops where that didn't exist even a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I understand that. And, and it is kind yeah. of concerning for people too, that, uh, it is. you know, they can't go and, and these communities don't want you to, to come in there, especially when, because I think you're dealing with a lot of native, uh, uh, yeah, people, so and, they're, and it's, it's, they're more vulnerable. They are. And, and the one in Echo Bay for the, into the native territory, that's open to BC residents only. And the Port Renfrew workshop is only open to Vancouver Island residents only. It's choices of those communities yeah. that we respect. Yeah. And it's changing. Yeah. You know, it's, it'll change and morph into other things over time, but that's the way it is today. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now I'm going to uh, get you into your presentation. I'm just going to okay. switch screens here. Great. And uh, we're going to um, uh, get you to... to uh, Go into your your presentation. I can start, I can start talking. You can start okay, talking so, and uh, and let yeah. me know when I gotta uh, move okay. uh, the screen. So okay. Um, so thanks a lot for the folks to chime in tonight with uh, with Frank's uh, YouTube channel. Um, so I'm Dave Hutchison. I'm a full time nature photographer. I live in Sydney, uh, close to Victoria, but you know closer to the Victoria Airport and the in the Schwartz Bay Ferry Terminal to go to Vancouver. So I'm, I'm really close in that proximity. 
Um, I'm Singray Filters uh, brand ambassador and actually their first international ambassador for their company. Um, Nikon professional services member and an advanced operations drone pilot with uh, Transport Canada. And that just gives me a lot more latitude to fly a drone, especially in Victoria, that's a lot of controlled airspace uh, because of airports and, you know, water. Um, there's, the, there's two airports in Victoria and downtown, uh, seaplane bases. Uh -huh. um, so uh, image that I have up here uh, was a popular image last year in the PPOC National Image Competition. And this image uh, won uh, first place uh, with best in class and fine art. So I have that kind of up on the front and actually just sold it in a gallery on high definition metal last week. So I was uh, excited about that. So, uh, so that's kind of my, my brief uh, introduction, but I, I, what the purpose of the presentation is tonight is I wanted to do something different. That's not often talked about. It is talked about sometimes with some uh, photographers, there's a few on YouTube that talk about the business of nature photography or the wow. business of photography. I can relate it to nature photography because that's what I do. Um, but I think a lot of these principles and skills that I'll discuss, they, they really transfer over to lots of businesses. Um, I come from a 25 year past sales career and commercial exercise equipment. So some of those skills that I learned from dealing with um, customers one on one often um, I've transferred those skills over into my photography business. So uh, we can go to the next page. Okay. Yeah. I can Thanks. do that. I have the capabilities. All right. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. So the, the you know the, the the foundation of of my business. Um, so the basics of how to develop a photo business, and then relating it back to my business and personal relationships are built around no like and trust. So really, a kind of a a key foundation to building again any business i got to bring it back to the photography business and some things will be photography specific as we move along but you know like if if a customer doesn't know you or like you or trust you they're not going to buy from you you know that's 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 the reality is that you know the no like and trust if if one of those things is broken for lack of a better term uh, it's business is going to be tough. So that's how I have been building with the workshops. And this picture here, uh, it was just from Saturday at a workshop. It was, we had the last two workshops were full. And this is even mm -hmm. like in COVID times, workshops were full. They were sold out uh, about a week before. Yeah. Um, so um, it's usually in and around that time. Sometimes it's a couple of days before it sells out. Um, but yeah, it's a workshops are a great way to be able to know, like, and trust and build that because you're there in person, you're talking to me, working with people one on one. Um, so it, it's uh, that's the way that I like to to do business is uh, in person, and that's been it's been challenging with COVID. I mean, we've had to all lots of photographers have had to. Uh, you know, reinvent themselves and figure out other ways to do things. And, you know, with, with workshops, uh, uh, myself and Matt, my workshop partner, uh, we've just been marketing largely in the local area and which it was a change, you know, we, we were, and we started to get results like pretty much within a couple of weeks that people were dying to do things because they weren't traveling. So they were around more. Yeah. So the local market, I'll, in a way, became easier to market to. So um, other ways that I, and it might be on the next page. We can probably just move to the next okay. page. And tweak me on the next thing. About uh, yeah, this is yeah about uh, no like and trust and yeah. So physical proximity works, and, and I was referring that back to the workshops. But uh, something that I did in 2018 and 19 is that when I really started to kind of where I wanted to go to the next level in my photography business in that 
in those years, I was working about three quarter time and I was still quarter time on my other business, uh, which I don't do that anymore. So I'm a hundred percent photography now, but I went and did 12 presentations to camera clubs on Vancouver Island. And I think I did one or two on the mainland as well. I think I did, I did one out in Port Moody, I think somewhere. Um, and that fit the being in person and building no like and trust. So I was doing things consciously that reinforce that ground principle of, of building no like and trust. So it's going to, I'm going to keep repeating that because it's so important. Yeah. Um, so, but it took time. It, it took, it took a year. <laughs> so, you know, to, to, you know, book uh, camera clubs like Victoria camera club, they're booked to the fall now um, for, for, for doing a, a live workshop. Um, so it, it's, there's a, there's a time commitment. It's a long game is what yeah. I call it. It's not, it's not a short, short term, quick fix. It's building no like and trust through physical proximity. It takes time and there's, I, I don't know of any shortcuts. <laughs> so, um, and that's where I kind of segue into social media and I just, especially if it's somebody that's starting out I just caution them on that because it's risky to build no like and trust through being behind a computer. So it's, I find it that it's, it's time consuming, it, you know, there's engagements that have to happen. You got to talk to people, chat with them. Maybe it goes to messenger or email or, or it could migrate to a, a zoom call, but yeah, it's, it's difficult to build no like and trust over uh, social media. It takes, it takes a lot of time. And I myself view it as more of a supportive uh, supplementary marketing tool rather than primary. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's kind of my take there on the, on the no like and trust. Does anybody have any questions about that? Anything yeah. coming up? Yeah, don't be shy to put a, a question into the chat. I can see it coming up and, and uh, I'll bring it up for Dave so um, he can answer it for you. But uh, we can go to the next slide. Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. So what I did here is that um, I guess my my picture is on top of some of the wording. Okay, I, I can move you. I can top, move you. Right? I can yeah. move okay, you. Okay, that's good. That's perfect. I got moved. <laughs> so what what I've done here is that basically without without showing dollar values, I'm showing you exactly where my sales are coming from in 2020. And again, 2020 being a COVID year. Um, but, you know, the percentages weren't that much different. The dollar values were down because it was COVID year. Mm -hmm is overall people were buying less. So like, I'm not hiding that it was different than 2019, but the percentages, not a lot different. So that's where I kind of made up this pie chart and you can see the the sales breakdown. Um, so 24% of my revenue from 2020 came from workshops. So pretty, pretty significant chunk. And, but what that tells me, is that, and I learned this from another photographer on YouTube just maybe like a month ago, and it was kind of a bit of an aha moment. And that's where I thought that I wanted to kind of develop my own presentation is that the business of nature photography is about an experience. It's not necessarily about that the market for selling products is a lot smaller, put it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 the market for the experience of landscape and wildlife photography is big. And I'm proving that with my sales and the pie chart right there. So with almost a quarter of my income coming from workshops, that tells me that people like the experience of being in nature. Yeah. Well, I agree They're not with you. buying a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. They're just you're so, it, it, they're buying you for taking them out to to experience that that, that nature right. I think is what it is there David. Exactly. Yeah. It's the experience of nature photography yeah. not the products and things of nature photography. Mm -hmm. So and then licensing's my my number 2 
What was that at 18 percent? Um, so licensing um, can be a couple of different things included in licensing the stock photography direct sales. Um, like, for example, if I licensed an image directly to a calendar company, yeah. like that's defined as licensing. It's pay, per, pay for permission to use. Mm -hmm. And then there's rights managed and then there's royalty free. And I know, I know you, Frank, you know about those differences yeah, yeah, about yeah. royalty free and rights managed. And some, some questions may come up in the chat about that because it's in, in the stock photography world, that's definitely been, there's been a lot of chatter about that in the last couple of years. There's, there's some major changes uh, happening. Yeah. Major, major changes have been yeah. happening in that, in that world. So in my licensing chunk of the pie chart, I lumped together stock photography and rights managed which is typically done myself rights managed together mm -hmm. so uh, other ex examples of licensing would be say a gallery wanted to print an image themselves and i just and i and they license the image from me because maybe they've got a printer in their gallery yeah. they just want to print yeah. it themselves yeah that's fine yeah that's fine so that's an example of licensing Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then kind of the close close third is prints. Uh, so 17% of my income last year was of, for prints. Uh, so, you know, paper prints, metal prints, canvas prints, and a number of that's at wholesale. Yeah. So, because a lot of what I do, not all of it, but uh, a significant portion is wholesale to resellers mm -hmm. it's actually just been in the last couple of months that i've been doing more direct sales and it's been starting to pick up off of facebook a couple of orders off of instagram but they're still a bit sporadic but it's taken it's taken quite a while for that to build up um and then a, a, a significant part of my business for a number of years has been art cards. And last year that was 12%. So just art cards and just yeah. like a $5 card. Yeah. But I sell thousands of them. Mm -hmm. So in, I started doing art cards in 2010. So 11 years ago, but the nice thing about art cards is that I do them all in person. So yeah. I visit the stores and I sell in person. And when I'm in the store with my kit, I always sell more when I'm in person than if somebody buys online. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I can increase my sales when I'm again, building the like and trust at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And I'm in person. Yeah. So yeah, and there's been, I think there's been years where I'd have to look back, but where our cards has been a higher percentage of sales than 12%. Okay. Because it's also tourism affected as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so with tourism down in 2020, art cards definitely fell. Mm -hmm. So I would guess maybe even in the past, it would have been close to 20% of my sales, but I'd have to look back. But um, yeah, so there have been a lot of cutbacks on that, but it's far from dead. But okay. yeah, it's it just like April and May last year, there was almost nothing because, yeah. you know, cruise ships stopped and all that kind of stuff. And now it's local tourism. Yeah. yeah. Which is so. great. So we have three yeah. questions here uh, okay. Dave, uh, coming up. So uh, Karen uh, is asking, uh, what social media do you use? Uh, Facebook is my primary. I, I seem to get the most engagement from my, maybe it was my demographics. My, Target market is typically over 45, over 50 for my workshops. Mm -hmm. um, and same with Matt. Matt is attracting maybe a slightly love, a younger age category because he's younger than me, so which is completely fine. Yeah. But, and then Instagram second, and I've just been um, starting to post a little bit more frequently on, on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. But to answer uh, Karen's Karen, question, yeah, yeah. Facebook is my main one right okay. now. Um, okay. Yeah, that's okay. But it's work. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it can be two hours a day on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. and you know, replying to people and managing the shares and the posts and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And then Robert's got a question. I would like to ask Dave, uh, what do you think about selling his own calendars? Yeah, yeah. And, and actually, I just got a proof from, for my branded calendar today uh, for 2022. I think calendars can be a wonderful way to market yourself and make some money. Um, but you have to order a large quantity and you have to have a distribution network. So, well, I say have to, I guess it's, is that do you want to be a photographer or a salesperson? Because with a calendar, if you have to sell, if you get a thousand or 1500 calendars to bring, it's generally about 1500 is where you get the price point down to a nice, nice point where you can wholesale them and still make money. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of legwork to sell those yourself if you're also the photographer. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of work. Okay. Okay. So I have a, um, a sales agent, you know, uh, that, 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 does, that does the selling and he has a whole bunch of other products. He has, and he represents other mm -hmm. artists. Um, but I do very little selling. I'll, I'll buy some from him to sell direct. But it's not it's not my priority because yeah. I get licensing for the images that he used for the mm -hmm. calendar. Mm -hmm. okay. So, yeah, so it, it's not impossible and it can be a good idea to have your own calendar. I just would want to <laughs> I want to paint a, a, an accurate picture to somebody entertaining the idea that it's going to be work. Yeah, it is legwork, you know, definitely. Yeah, 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 you have to have. Yeah many many wholesale accounts to turn those thousand or fifteen hundred calendars over yeah and then karen here has got uh, can you elaborate on wholesale to retail sellers sure sure so wholesale is if somebody is buying to resell it so if i walk into the paper chain downtown victoria it's a store it's a gift shop papery rather you know mixed up with another customer mm -hmm. it doesn't matter who it is but if they're reselling the product, that's wholesale. Re, uh, retail is where I'm selling it directly to the end user. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I'll flip side slides here. Okay. Go and, for it. And uh, we'll move on. Sure. Okay. Here's a good looking yeah. group of people. There's a good looking group of Let people. Let me just yeah. move, you, move you across okay, the way sure. here. Yeah. Yeah, so just to talk about the work now, now what I'm doing is I'm breaking down the I think I broke down the top four of my sales categories. That's where I'm transitioning into now. So we'll go through workshops, licensing, prints, and whatever the other one was. Um, and so we'll go through that stuff. So again, you have 12 camera club presentations in 2018 and 2019. I did two presentations for PPOC. These were ways that I could introduce myself to people. And again, back to, you know what? No like and trust. It, it, back to the foundation. And these are actions that I took over, over geez, probably even spanned a year and a half um, to really, you know, uh, get my business started into another level. Mm -hmm. and, and be able to uh, market my workshops too, because I, I love teaching, I love helping people. Um, and uh, I guess it, th this coming July, it'll be two years that I started up a meetup group. Mm -hmm. So I have a meetup group um, that's based in the Southern Vancouver Island. So there's a couple of folks come from Nanaimo, Duncan, mainly Victoria, but Souk, it's starting to kind of branch out a little bit, I think. The last I checked is about 370 members, but you know, uh, a decent chunk are, are quite engaged. And about a year and a half ago, I had an idea to do a meetup group at a, a, a very, an old growth forest with Western red cedars that are in a thousand year old range that is unprotected with flagging tape all the way around it for logging. And uh, 25 people showed up to the meetup group. Oh. <laughs> so this is this is the, the the picture of the the all the folks and me in the front yeah. uh, that showed up to that event. And it was just an idea that I had. And bang, a couple of weeks later, there's 25 of us in the bush. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a way that I could 
get the information about old growth forest protection to 25 people and then they each tell 10 people yeah and then there's like 250 people know about it yeah yeah or more yeah so yes yeah, some of these people now donate to ancient forest alliance or pacific wild or, or whatever so it it was cool to see mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and and again this is also another avenue that i genuinely market myself to the meetup group like yeah. the meetups themselves there's no charge yeah like i don't charge i don't charge for meetups um but some of them come to my workshops mm -hmm. and some of them just come to meetups and that's fine yeah okay. so um and then my uh website for marketing workshops and also more recently more recently i'd say since the fall um social media i've we've been getting some I'd say in the kind of the 25 to 30 percent range of our one day workshops are coming off of Facebook mm -hmm. um, bookings. Mm -hmm. So people actually booking off of the event listing on Facebook. OK, but yeah, you know, I've had to build up and, you know, get collect a, a larger number of followers. It's a numbers game on social media. Yeah, you know, yeah it is. Yeah, for sure. It, it is. And it's. And it's, that's where I throw a risk to caution because, you know, it's, it, it's not, it, it goes against some marketing principles. It's, uh, I struggle with it from time to time is how to do target marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do areas and what that and age categories. And so that there, there are some ways, but I just find if I can get face to face, it works better. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's, it's just proven over many many years and many different types of businesses that that works yeah um so you know social media has its place but again i i like to think of it as more of a backup and, mm -hmm. and supplementary mm -hmm. so that's okay. kind of the the, the 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 bit of the quick rundown about how i have been what the steps that i took to be able to market workshops and then have them be a reality Okay. Where well, actually people come to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, we we'll go to the next one. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So licensing. Yeah, and this will this will uh, be an interesting one. I don't know if I'm covered up on a couple yeah. of words to the right, but yeah. yeah. So again, licensing is to just to kind of break it down to simple terms, is that it's pay for permission to use an image. Mm -hmm. So. A way to look at it is that, you know, there's commercial and there's editorial. And so editorial usually doesn't pay a whole lot. It's kind of like the rule of thumb from the older days was could be at least half of commercial or less. Um, but that gap has been starting to close where um, big marketing agencies are putting pressure to bring the prices down yeah. closer to editorial prices. This is commercial prices mm -hmm. I'm talking yeah. about. So, you know, there, there's this meeting of those two avenues. And then this royalty free business started coming in. And like, I, I don't do royalty free directly myself. There's really no point. Yeah. It, you know, so the, the when, when I do a sale directly to license its rights managed. And I have a, actually I could put this in another, yeah. another version of this program is that I, of this uh, presentation is that I use a program called photo biz or uh, actually a version of that is called photo quote photo with an F. Mm -hmm. So F O T O quote. And, um, I use that as a guideline for my quoting for rights managed images. So the program will ask me for circulation, uh, where in the book or the magazine that the image is going, or is it going on a billboard yeah. or, or yeah. is it going in a, uh, an annual report? And then the size, the size of the image and geographical territory. And if there's any other higher risk equipment like drone, like mm -hmm. you can charge extra for drone because it's yeah. higher, it's higher risk. Yeah. Um, so I use a program to calculate the prices for for rights managed like this particular image here. Otter Bay Marina purchased this image from me directly, but I quoted it to them based on what their usage was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So 
how much are they standing to profit from it from using the image yeah. to market their marina then they pay more yeah yeah i know so, it uh, you know the media uh, lately is as they are just being pounded by the costs and everything is so expensive so they're really fighting to keep keep their prices down when they're getting photos and images from uh, people it's 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 a it's a tough battle going forward it yeah. can it can be it can be tough for for some photographers and I I, I actually I just turned down a, um, a, a quote they just said they couldn't afford it and I didn't think it was a high price so I just I walked away mm -hmm. and and I and I and I and, I, and that's new for me yeah. it, you know and I just thought you know I, I want to keep the prices at a level where I think that they should be and what the work is worth yeah and well, you have to pay for your, your time, David, you know, and, and, and yeah. people don't realize that there is a lot of costs and, and uh, goes behind the, your experience. Everything goes behind that to, to get that image. It's not you just don't go out and take that snap uh, and, and, and oh, yeah. you, you know, like <laughs> there. Yeah, there's um, somewhere on a, on a website and I wasn't able to find it the other day called um, AP Almanac. It's about architecture photography and i believe on there that there's a breakdown about how what how you can show a client where the costs have gone in your business mm -hmm. in the sense of you know 30 percent for equipment 20 percent admin 10 percent shooting time you know 10 percent email time like there's there's actually yeah. a way to break it down and i think that it, it, it just it, it just led something uh, it proved something to me that with photography and the business of photography especially in the commercial end of it um, there's educating that's ongoing mm -hmm. it's educating the client and not rushing into selling something and just trying to just make a quick sale is to yeah. educate them on what's involved like what you just said Frank yeah. that, that there's that there's a lot that there's a lot that goes into it. There's tens of thousands of dollars a year. There's time, insurance. Oh, yeah. 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 Sure. So what else have I got up on here? So stock photography, that's basically, yeah. you know, ro mostly royalty free yeah. now. Yeah. There's the occasional sale that comes in mm -hmm. for rights managed on stock photography, but it's, it's few and far between yeah. now. Yeah. Um, so, but I still have stock photography in my mix, but it's a, it's a small part yeah. of my revenue. I think everybody has to have it in there and, and uh, yeah. it, you just and, have to sell a lot of it to make any sort of, but there's product. another fringe benefit to doing stock photography. And I'll give a couple of real examples is that, so I'm on a well-known stock site in Canada and one year, Canada Post and BC Ferries found me on the stock site, called me and wanted to know what other images that I had. Hmm. So I, I didn't necessarily, I didn't take business away from the stock company yeah. because I never, I didn't, I didn't, I never asked them to call me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? They, they went yeah. on their own volition on uh, to give me a call or email me, whatever they did to, to connect with me. Is to, that they were intrigued by this series of images. I think they were bear images. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to know what else I had. So it was advertising. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I found that, geez, okay, well, I guess I. it's pretty good to be on the stock uh, agents. It, it never hurts. Never hurts it to hurt. have the fielders out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. So I just wanted to okay. share that. that okay. it, it can be uh, side benefits. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so we can move on from okay. there. I think that's probably enough. Any, yep. Anybody yep. have any questions about licensing? I know, I know it can kind of, yeah, it can kind of uh, bring up some yeah, questions. Nobody has asked anything yeah. yet. All right. so, yeah. Okay, I'll so, keep talking. <laughs> and this is your top so, selling image. Yeah, this is my top selling image for for licensing. Okay. So not for not for prints, not for fine art prints or anything like that. It does it does okay on cards. But actually, I'm talking about licensing. Is that this image? It's been on calendars, brochures, books, magazines, and just people like it. And mm -hmm. and the bonus is I got six different versions because it was a sequence of six that I got. 
right? And you know, before the splash, and it was gone. Um, but I, I put this up here as uh, to give folks an indication and giving them an example of the types of images that sell. So wildlife images do well for licensing. Um, I don't find that they sell really, really well like in fine art galleries. They tend to be more landscapes that mm -hmm. sell in fine art galleries. So, but that's, that could be different for another photographer. Yeah. So um, I can just, I'm just giving my experiences, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. And I tried for eight years to get um, a whale breach shot of like this. Yeah. yeah. It, so it took a long time. Like I thought I was going mad. I was going out, you know, three, four times every summer and, you know, <laughs> and it's just like, okay, now I'm up to thousands of dollars. <laughs> and, um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it just, yeah. The moment came and it, yeah. and it and it paid off and and you were there at the right time, right spot. I, That's it. I was there at the right time and the right spot. Everything yeah. was ethical as well. We weren't chasing whales yeah. or anything crazy yeah. like that. A very well known company out of Cowich and Bay that's super ethical. Mm -hmm. uh, excellent uh, boat driver and guide, Gary. Um, yeah. I go out with Gary at least two or three times every summer now. Okay. Um, for okay. geez, the last probably with Gary three years, four yeah. years now since he's yeah. been with the company, maybe longer. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, oh yes, Rob is saying the uh, yeah the combo. Yeah, yeah the, I like that. Yeah, yeah. And, the the eight fifty on the three hundred worked very well. It was yeah. super fast. And Karen's asking, which stock companies do you like the best? None of them. None of them. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. I don't have a favorite they, stock yeah, company. Yeah. Um, I use Wire Stock because they submit to multiple companies. Wire stock is like a porthole. They take a fee, but I don't have to submit to 10 stock agencies. They mm -hmm. do the submitting for me yeah. or for whoever is yeah. submitting to me. Yeah. And, and they pay out monthly mm -hmm. uh, by PayPal. So it's, it's the, just, they're easy to deal with. Yeah. Uh, sometimes there's a bit of a mix up between commercial and editorial. And that may be just maybe me learning more about that. And it's easy to correct if mm -hmm. I goof up. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, to my experience with that high volume stock photography, uh, to get regular income, probably got to be at least a thousand images. Oh, at least, at least, yeah, at that. least. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm saying like yeah. rock bottom minimum, yeah. two thousand yeah. would be better. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I'm with wire stock. I started, I think, in September, maybe August, yeah. and I'm just starting to see. Uh, monthly income now. Yeah. And so the thing it, is, you know, yeah. I just want to comment with that too, David, is, sure. is that uh, uh, when, when a photographer is looking at a stock to get into the stock business, they have to remember that they need to have images that are going to be timeless. This image here that you've got up on this whale is a timeless image. It could go on for 20 years. It sells every you never day. Know, you never know when that photo was taken. And you have to right. apply that same thing to a photo. Is yeah. It's got to look timeless in order to be a successful photo that a, an agency is going to sell over and over where you're going to make a continuous amount of money on it. Yeah, that's an excellent point because some stock agencies and well, it could even be commercial like tourism and whatnot. If the clothing is out of date or you know, things become yeah. old in an image. Yeah. It's not yeah. worth it. Or, you know, the, the, the kayak is a different model. Yeah. Then it's modern now. That image is, it, it's expired. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So excellent point that you bring okay. up, Frank. Yeah. The, okay. it, if they're timeless like this, literally, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Every day, this whale sells on stock. Yeah. Oh, well, and I can yeah. see why. It, it is. Yeah. It's, and I'm going to move you. Uh, again just a couple other, just throwing up a couple other examples of some images that that uh, have done well with licensing. Mm -hmm. um, eh, not so much stock, maybe because it's just yeah. it's buried yeah. in a million different bear pictures. But and this, these both sell decent on prints. Mm -hmm. So on um, you know small to medium sized paper prints, um, you know I've. I've had these images for over 10 years. So and then you'd the, never tell, you know, I mean, it's again, yeah, these are and, timeless images, you know, so. and, 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 and honestly, that's a, that's a great point, yeah. Frank, about the timeless nature is that 
the the client that would buy these the, nobody has ever asked when I took the picture. They don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it just absolutely. becomes irrelevant to yeah. them. So, yeah. excellent point that that, yeah. that you bring up there. But and, um, yeah, there's some older gear, so you can yeah. see that this that, that the that the images are taken. Um, and we had we had time. one one person in the chat, Dave, that uh, actually yeah. listened to our instructions, put a cue in front of the the, the question. <laughs> do you own your own editing, and what program do you use? I use Lightroom and Photoshop, but I, I also use quite a few plugins. I use Topaz and, and the Nick Suite. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I use both of those quite often. I use Luminosity Mask through Photoshop. So I I just try to get out of Lightroom as quick as I can. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. You know, just I, I just yeah, and I think that in the future, and I've had uh, I've emailed Rob about this for the future is to switch to capture one yeah i've yeah. i've done some uh, of my own research and i was shocked at a few things that i saw about um how lightroom was handling images versus capture one mm -hmm. and i know yeah, rob, so rob is a big capture one promoter yeah so yeah 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 and, and then uh, once i get some uh, some free time in the in the next couple of weeks i'm definitely going to connect with them yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's another image that is done well with licensing. Canada Post bought it one year and for uh, Collections Canada yeah. a book, a collector yeah. book. Uh, but you know, it was a really memorable moment too. Mm -hmm. Like these, these two scrapped for like a half an hour. Yeah, it was it was crazy. But um, they look yeah, massive. So just, yeah, yeah. They and and actually they were recording. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, male, okay. Male, but yeah. yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, it was an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just to be able to, you know, talk about that time. It might even be more than a half an hour. Mm -hmm. It was. I thought my D five hundred was going to burn up. I was using yeah. it that much. <sighs> yeah. And here you've got so uh, um, your print and art card. Yeah. Yeah. So a little bit of a rundown into the next kind of area of. Um, uh, the sales breakdown you know we've we've transitioned from workshops to talking about licensing and now about uh prints i left the s off of prints so i have to correct that so prints and art cards so how to sell prints again back to face to face i i enjoy going into galleries and meeting face to face there are still some um difficulties getting photography into fine art galleries it, it's work mm -hmm. it, it's it, it's there, there definitely is some uh it, it's it's usually multiple visits um to, to be able to get some sort of wall space or uh, get into you know partnering on a show with other with other artists in a fine art gallery it, it's work yeah in it Usually there's some little thing that 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 gives the edge that, you know, you get a referral to somebody in there that knows somebody. Oh, oh my friend's friend owns the gallery. You should go over there and talk to them. There'd be some other link that connects it up that I find that gives that they can give an edge. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so networking. So just net. We can't yeah. beat networking. Yeah, no. Um, so face to face with galleries and framing galleries work really well mm -hmm. um, because framing galleries need prints to frame so they can make money. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, when I sell a print to a framing gallery, uh, sometimes it's wholesale, sometimes it's on consignment. It, it just depends on if it fits with what they're doing and with what I'm doing. Um, uh, I won't sell it with Matboard. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll just have it in a sleeve with foam core so it doesn't bend. Yeah. But they, again, I'm making myself more valuable to them so they can make money on the mat board and the framing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, they all like that. Like yeah. they're, they're not going to turn that away. So you, it, by supplying the print, you're making yourself more valuable that they can make money off of their services. It so framing galleries. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. Framing galleries tend to be good. So, yeah. Uh, ninety-five percent of my art card sales are wholesale. Yeah. yeah, so they're again back to face to face gift shops. 
there has been some online sales recently uh, mm-hmm. with uh, with Facebook. Um, just maybe the they've been poking around on my website and they've seen our cards and yeah, it's been I don't know three or four orders in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's still still good business. Oh, okay. uh, the thing with our cards to 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 do that business. You need to order a lot of cards too at a time. Mm-hmm. Depending on the supplier, could be around eight hundred to a thousand cards at a time, but not of each image. Yeah. So, depending on the supplier and your relationship with the supplier, you might be able to negotiate. But generally, they'll want to print at least a hundred of one image on a card. And because it's you're trying to get the cost down to the cents. Right, and then because you get your bag cost and your envelope cost, if you want to wholesale them, you have to order them in volume. It's just yeah. like the calendar business. Yeah, you got to order the calendars in volume if you're going to be able to wholesale them because yeah. you have to bring the price down. Yeah, everybody's got to make money on that uh, product. Yeah. So, to, uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. The, the more you have, the more. Be... Yeah, the more you could kind of uh, uh, work with them on uh, on the prices. So definitely. Uh, and then for the folks out there that are kind of maybe wondering more about an explanation on wholesale, is that generally speaking, wholesale is half of retail. Mm-hmm. So if an art card sells for six bucks, then chances are the artist is wholesaling it for three bucks. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so that would be your target is that, okay, what are you going to make it for to make money on three bucks? Mm-hmm. And how many thousands are you going to have to sell? And what are your distribution channels? How yeah. are you going to do it? Yeah. So that's, yeah, the art card business is similar to the calendar business. Uh, social media requires engagement. Yeah. So that's what I've found is, is, has been working for me. It's time consuming, but you just, it's genuine engagement. When somebody asks a question, you start a dialogue with them, mm-hmm. you know, and, and basically you start chatting with them yeah. and people are very chatty and engaged on social media but yeah. you just can't give a like and a thumbs up that doesn't sell anything no no it doesn't you know you need more and more than that it's belly they call it belly to belly the old old salespeople. belly to belly <laughs> yeah that's right, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, belly belly. and we had another uh, question here from question. wayne yeah uh yeah do you do your uh do you print yourself or and what type of printer do you use if if you print yeah, I actually don't right now. I used to. I used to have an Epson 3880, and that wore out. And hey, actually, mine did too. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a tank. Like yeah. it was it was a workhorse. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I think it because I used to do markets years ago, yeah. and it was a lot of volume. Yeah. I think it had something like seven or eight thousand prints through it, but I was also printing cards through it too. So. You know, like it and in paper, and so you know it might sound like a lot, but it wasn't like seven or eight thousand mm-hmm. fine art prints went through it. You know, it it it, can, it counts a one cent piece of paper as being a print. Yeah. Um, but two heads burned out, and I just never replaced it. Yeah. Yeah. It's cheaper and, to and buy and a new just, one than to have it uh, repaired. Is what I found out. Yeah. Exactly. You know. So. Yeah. 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 But in the future, I'm investigating getting a printer. So to answer Wayne's question. Mm-hmm. Yes, I did print in the past. No, I don't now. Mm-hmm. And actually, I miss it. I like yeah, printing. Yeah. And I'm aiming to print in the future. Mm-hmm. And I've used Epson, so like that worked for me in the past. Yeah. So, but you know, there's other good ones out there too. Mm-hmm. Uh, types of images that sell well on print, because we're talking about prints. We're in the print yeah. section. So, like the like the big splash on the left that does well on a large canvas. The one on the right does well on metal, mm-hmm. you know, so different images and different mediums. Uh, it's not always canvas or paper or metal. Uh, those are the three top ones for me. Yeah. I'd like to try, try some images on acrylic in the future, you know, the dye bond acrylic, but just mm-hmm. haven't got to that yet. Yeah. But um, around here, lots of folks like canvas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, they do. Yeah. And I, I think so. Yeah. In the, in yeah. the States. Yeah. A lot of the, you go into the galleries in the U S a lot of metal. Yeah. And acrylics so, uh, and acrylics. And yeah. Acrylic. Yeah. yeah. So there's a couple of examples of, uh, of some images that, that, um, just to give folks an idea of the types of images that, um, 
that, that, that sell on fine art prints. Mm -hmm. That's why I have that that slide there. We got Karen has a question. Yeah. Where do you get your images printed? Yeah, uh, a couple of different places. Uh, art Box in Victoria and Canvas Plus uh, in Ladysmith. Alan does a great job. Um, and those are the two main places that, that I've been ordering from lately. Um, but it depends on the product. Uh, you know, it depends on like so one printer might do art cards better than another one. And that one might do canvases better than another one. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's not unusual to deal with a couple of different printers if you have a wide variety of products to print. Um, but for paper prints, there's probably more places that do a good job. Mm -hmm. There'll be more to choose from. Mm -hmm. um, it's canvas. There's a couple other things that come into play with the coatings and, 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 and things like that. And, and the canvas itself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. We can move on from yeah. there. How are we doing for time? We're at eight o'clock. Uh, yeah, we're so doing, I mean, it's, it's doing, just, you know, I see we've got, good? you know, 17 people, uh, are engaged in wa and watching and, and listening. So, uh, okay. I'm glad that, you know, everybody's enjoying it and we'll, we'll keep on going. Um, sure. you know, and, sure. and, uh, we've got, uh, like I say, there's some critiquing a uh, few images at the end, uh, for, sure. uh, a sure. viewer had sent some photos in. So, sure. uh, but yeah. That's... So, uh, so this is a, this is an image that I took recently uh, at Carmana Walbrand uh, Provincial Park, and uh, I have it with some other images on an Airbnb uh, listing that I have. Mm -hmm. And and I got a client last fall that had booked me for guiding because she didn't want to drive there on her own because it's like a five hour drive from Sydney. Yeah, it's way up way out in the boonies down logging roads and whatnot. And I've been there probably five or six times. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I put this on here is that this is, this is kind of, I think one of those last kind of a smaller portion of that pie chart of sales, the lessons in guiding. But mm -hmm. the note on this one is the guiding is the one that's been affected the most by COVID because the clients that I was doing guiding for before COVID were Americans. Yeah. Yeah. This, this part of the business almost died mm -hmm. and it, and it hasn't, it hasn't recovered. Yeah. Well, yeah. hopefully soon, and hopefully soon. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I have a client that wants to book me for eight days from the U S in July and he, he can't, uh, if he's got a quarantine for 14 days yeah. or whatever it would be. Yeah. He, he can't he can't do that so yeah it's a significant just to kind of tie in a little bit of hey we gotta have we gotta talk about COVID at some yeah, point yeah, yeah. Um, but uh -huh. guiding is the is the is the sector of my business that's been impacted the most lessons has been pretty pretty steady so mm -hmm. but uh, referrals are great for lessons social media Google search I've been working on improving my SEO and the Google a search engine and just kind of cleaning that up and tidying that up. Mm -hmm. Meetup group is good for that. I get lessons from that. Um, and then the guiding is usually Google searches or well, and then there's the Airbnb, yeah, they but find it's, yeah, yeah. it's okay. completely tanked uh, because okay. of COVID. Yeah. So, so we got a couple of questions here for you. Yeah. Uh, sure. Do you sign your photos when you sell them? Yes, I have a, a scalable uh, digital signature. I have two. I have one that I use for social media, and then I've, I've got another one, a scalable, uh, like I think it's like an AI file or PNG or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and I use, I have another one that actually almost looks like my real signature, and that one I use on prints. So I don't hand sign a print, but they're electronically signed with my own signature. Okay. And then some of them uh, from uh, the past, some of them are limited edition, and ones in the current day are open editions. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had Mike here is yeah. asking, do you use Hannah Mule yeah. paper? I have in the past. I would I would look at Hannah Mule again in the future when I start doing my own printing. I did most of my printing on Epson paper and, and Red River. I really like Red River paper out of Texas. 
And I just saw that Tricera in Vancouver uh, sells Red River when I was researching. Oh, are they? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, okay. they're the Epson dealer. And yeah. I got a quote on an Epson printer from Tricera, a couple, I don't know, a month ago or something. Yeah. And, and just as I started to do some research. And yeah, but uh, I've I've had success in the past with Hannah Mule. Mm-hmm. I think, again, these different types of papers – it's a matter of selecting what paper suits your image the best. That's what I remember the most for when I was doing my yeah. own printing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we Dorothy got a question, a question here from Dorothy. Uh, do you, do you know your brand style? Well, let me bring that up again. Uh, brand, brand and style right away when you went professional or did you develop and evolve over, over time? I think it developed and evolved over time. Yeah. Yeah. I think I had, I had ideas in my mind that personal selling was going to be a foundation, but you know, I, I, I don't want to sit here and say that I had this all planned out because that's just not true. Uh-huh. It, it, it's been so many, um, well, I wouldn't say so many, but there's been things that I've just had to course correct on, you know, yeah. it was COVID, but yeah. there's been other things. Um, yeah. So, uh, I think it's more developed over time to answer the question. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then um, just a bit about something that's been growing in my business is affiliations and sponsorships. It's um, it's becoming a more important part of my business mm-hmm. as it kind of moves on. And with Singray Filters just being a new brand ambassador, I'm uh, ambassador for F-Stop Backpacks, uh, FLM Tripods, and Topaz Labs. So those are the four main. Well, Topaz Labs is more of an affiliate, yeah, uh, not an ambassador. Yeah, affiliates and ambassadors are kind of different grades, different levels. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's ways there's ways to make money from affili- being an affiliate and being an ambassador. So yeah. it is starting to produce income. I've seen actual real money come in. Yeah. Um, but it's still a small percentage of my overall sales, but it's actually growing. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. So what it'll grow to, I don't know. Yeah. But um, there are some companies like Topaz, I think that as a photographer gets bigger and has more traction in social media, they'll actually pay the photographer to do videos and speaking engagements. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think Singray does that, but I also got some product from them. So I have services to return back yeah. to them in, yeah. under the agreement yeah so like blogs i gotta write a blog and a webinar for sing ray as an example to mm-hmm. give back mm-hmm. yeah because they have supplied filters at no charge for my workshops yeah okay so they give the uh, a kit of filters for clients to use at workshops so that's cool at a long exposure workshop a customer doesn't have to have filters hey i'm coming to your workshop Hey, everybody in the chat, sign up for that workshop. Yeah, there you go. Hey, yeah. that alone so, is, is worth the admission, Dave. <laughs> yeah, well, the, 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 the filters are 10 times more than the workshop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, absolutely. But, yeah. Um, so, again, this is relationship building, too, and, and kind of just throwing a harp on this, but it's back to the no like, and trust and relationship building, mm-hmm. is that the folks at Singray, I've known, I've known Laura there for – I don't know, probably eight years or something. So it's because I've been using their filters for years. I just, it just never resonated with me or was in my, in my thinking to be an affiliate or an ambassador just until recently. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that where the switch happened is where I became fully committed and full time. I've seen lots of things change because of that commitment. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's something to be said to commit and go full time, but it has to be the right time for everybody. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So what else do I want to say here okay. about? It? Yeah. Okay, we can move on from. Okay, from the and then we got your you talk about Grant. Grant's are fun. Yeah, Grant's is interesting. I, I I don't I definitely don't want to sit here and claim I'm an expert on Grant's, but I have submitted for two Grant's recently, actually three weeks ago, two BC Grant's. And one was a small business grant and one was a grant for launch online for a new website. I haven't heard back to the either way, yes or no, uh, but I'm expecting to hear back in the next week or two on those grants. But 
there's a significant amount of preparation work and yeah, like it's, there's free money out there for folks. And I really had no idea about the world of grants until I started digging around a few months ago into it. And I thought, holy smokes, man, there is like $300 million in this one kitty, 12 million in this kitty, a hundred million in this kitty. And it's just like yeah. a lot of folks don't know that this money exists or I didn't. Yeah. And there's a couple of tips that I can give folks if they want to submit for uh, grants is that you got to pay your taxes and you got to have updated tax returns and financial statements for your business. Yeah. Yeah. They, they ask they, for that, they, don't they? Yeah. They ask for that. Yeah. And I had a couple of errors in one of mine and it took about a week for my accountant to clean it up. It was some clerical stuff. It, it, and so that cost me about a week. Um, and then I got back on track and then I submitted everything. Mm -hmm. So there is something to be said to have in your books in order. And it's, it's nice that they are in order. Now I thought that they were in order, but now they're really in order yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I, they, they have to be tight and accurate to submit to the grant people. Yeah. Um, you know, balance sheet, profit and loss, uh, notice of assessment, and your tax return, T1 general or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. So though, I'm just giving some tips to folks. Yeah. Is yeah. That, no, it, it, you have to it, have that. Uh, I know everything's going to be gotta have that stuff, boo. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, They're not going to yeah. give you money yeah. when you owe them taxes. <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. If you owe any taxes, you're not getting a grant. <laughs> yeah. Now we have yeah. a question here from Mike. Uh, what format do you save your images to, TIFF or JPEG? I saved the TIFF first because I... I, I finish in my second half of my image editing process. I edit the TIFF in Photoshop. So it could be, you know, uh, luminosity mass, or I could be accessing the Nix software or Topaz. Then when I finish the TIFF, then I'll create a JPEG to go on my website or go to stock or licensing or a printing company to make an art card that's all jpegs but the master finished file is in tiff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we're kind of coming to the we're creeping towards the end is that we have time to experiment just uh experimenting is is super fun and yeah. uh, sometimes it can be a little bit annoying when yeah. things don't work out i'll be i'll be honest but um yeah, this is a new image from, mm -hmm. I think it's only like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I took this one, cool. an intentional, yeah. intentional camera movement. Yeah. And yeah, just challenge yourself and experiment. And I actually just printed this out. I actually just picked it up today from the printing company to put uh, in a local gallery. She was mm -hmm. interested in showing it. So just a, a cool. modest yeah. size print. Yeah. Nothing, yeah, nothing cool. huge or anything extravagant, yeah. but kind of more of a test. Yeah. And um, yeah. So yeah, experiment. And this is an example of me experimenting. And uh, yeah. Okay. And then I know it, uh, Dorothy was just saying thank you for the inspiring conversation. So well, you're welcome, uh, Dorothy. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. And uh, so I know we've got some. We got some of these photos uh, that we'll we'll bring up sure. after. And sure, I'm just going to go run fun. through with uh, Dave's presentation here. We're just yeah, about to the end here. Couple. So. Um, yeah, a couple more slides, yeah, and, yeah. and and I've already touched on a bunch of yeah. this stuff about yeah. what I offer. Yeah. You know, private lessons, one day and multi day workshops. Um, I really hope that the Arctic happens this year. It's actually sounding positive. I've gotten actually correspondence from the lodge and none of it that mm -hmm. it actually looks like it really may happen this fall. But they're instituting their own COVID testing policies where I have to get a COVID test in Yellowknife and again at Anadai Lake. Okay. When I get off the oh. float plane, I got to get tested again. So, mm. and all the clients as well. Mm. Um, but the catch is, is though that most of the customers that have booked for the Arctic are Americans. Oh. So if I can get there and they can't get there, then it's kind of irrelevant. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole about that, but I'm going to really, <laughs> really hope that the Arctic works or maybe, or maybe it's next year, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, it is what it is. But um, I also uh, offer image editing uh, on Zoom, uh, gear consultations, uh, and mentoring. Mm -hmm. So I have one mentor client right now, 
in probably with my schedule, probably two a month would be about the most. Okay. Um, because there is quite a bit of time involved in correspondence in between sessions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but I enjoy doing them. They're, yeah. they're, they're lots okay. of fun. Okay. And, and I've seen people like learn a lot fast. Well, yeah. That is, there's my website and contact mentoring. information and yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're done. Okay. Okay. So, it, uh, yeah. So there's a, Dave's uh, website, his email, his Facebook, uh, Instagram, and all this will be online for you to go back uh, later on to, to write it down and, and uh, uh, get it closely. And if you're liking this so far, please give us the thumbs up. There are 16 of us out here. We got nine thumbs up. So we need more thumbs up. We need more thumbs up to, to thumbs. Get, get this thing happening. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now, Dave, is we're going to go on to, uh, and I'm going to bring in, uh, we've got a group of people out here that I'm going to bring in, and we can talk about some photos uh, quickly. We'll go sure. through this. And uh, uh, we've got Robert, uh, Karen, if you want to come in. I don't know, uh, Mike, uh, who's who's out there? Wayne, uh, hit that uh, guest cam. We'll bring you in. We can talk about some photos and uh, yeah. Sure. So great. I don't know if I haven't uh, get anybody else. Let me just see which one's going to be better. Oh, I think this is going to be a better shot here. For yeah, we can uh, look at it. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, okay, we got uh, Robert jumping in. Okay, Robert. Hey, Robert. Yeah, so let me Hello. put Robert. Okay, he's okay. Robert's in there. Okay, and let me just. Hello. Hey, Robert. Yeah, we got hey, you. Hey, just yeah, let me just. Uh... Okay, Robert, you got your the YouTube uh, on there. Yes, he's okay. muted now. I, yeah. I just realized. Okay, did you? Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So, all right. Uh, so, let's just... Uh, we, know we got a couple of photos in here. Okay. Anybody else coming in? Uh, we're good. So, just we got three of us in here so far. So, tell us about this one, uh, Dave. Where, where did you... Oh, yeah. I was in a... Uh, uh, this is Eden Grove where it was another visit after, like, I don't know, it could have been a year after that meetup group shot with the 25 mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was actually, there was, uh, there's a wilderness organization, a conservation organization in Vancouver. And again, I've known the lady there for several years and I was just chatting to her on the phone one day and she said, well, wouldn't mind some new forest images for this next calendar that we're doing. And I mm -hmm. said, well, I'm going to Port Renfrew in another week or so. Yeah. And I said, you know, I'd be, can you give me an idea of what you're looking at? What, what, what are you, what are you thinking about? So we had a conversation and again, I wasn't, I wasn't paid or anything like that to go, to go there and shoot. It just kind of, it worked well at the same time that I was going there anyways. Mm hmm. I ended up selling this image to the cover for the cover of their calendar. Yeah, that's cool. That's a cool shot. I mean, I yeah, I was on, basically on the other screen. Just, it's really great. Detail. Yeah, just yeah. down on my hands and knees and just as low as I could get. And not a complicated photo by any yeah. means. Yeah. Not n nothing extraordinary about editing. You know, a bit of tonal contrast to give some more depth. Yeah. Maybe take down the highlights, bring yeah. up some bit of saturation and luminance on the greens, mm. like not a lot of complicated editing. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Single shot, yeah. but it's the angle. It's the angle is she wanted something bold. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, uh, that kind of, oh, I can go That's there. Bold. Yeah, yeah. it's bold. That's in your face for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, I really like that image. And as you said, the angle is really important and, and the feel of the wide angle lens is just amazing. The, it works really well. Yeah. Yeah, that's a cool Thanks, shot yeah, for that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was, was it 14 millimeters, Frank? I can't read it. Uh, well, I guess. It's, 14. Yes, it was 14 millimeters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so. I, I, in the forest, I often shoot at slow shutter speeds if nothing's moving. Yeah. And, it's, and if it's dead calm, like this is in a valley. And I've been to this forest probably five, six times. And. You could shoot ten seconds in there and it'd yeah. still be sharp. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and I just, mean, it's just yeah. It's uh, you know, especially tripods. Still. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, with a tripod and stuff. Yeah, yeah that was on a tripod. Yeah, yeah, I just had the tripod on the ground. Yeah. This has been a popular image. Yeah. Yeah, this has been a good one over yeah, the years. Yeah, we saw that earlier on. Yeah. On a cover page of a calendar. I just got noticed this uh, today. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And then we got another cool. one of yours. Is This one here is a really cool one with this little tree. I really like that. Uh, yeah. And that was just about timing, Frank. Yeah. You know, yeah. is yeah. that watching the water drops come down. In fact, at first, I thought it might have been like a bug. Yeah. That it was creating that, that ripple. And I just kept shooting. And I just thought, I'm just going to keep shooting yeah. and see if I can catch it with yeah. that with that ripple. And it's just timing, right? Mm-hmm. Was that a fish or something in there? Or? No, I think it was something. It was something dropping off the oh. end of the tree. Oh. Okay, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what that bee would like, Dave, if that was taken out. What do you think? Would it, would it make that difference, or, or? Oh yeah. Or, do you be... like that? Do do people like that in that? that they just... like that. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. Because I called the image drop in time, mm-hmm. and I think that, especially in image competitions. Uh, titles hold some weight not all yeah. of them yeah some don't have any kind of ruling about the title but mm-hmm. uh, I think a title matters yeah yeah okay so okay. I don't know, what what gear did I use a 300 on that I don't remember uh, it was a 300 uh, millimeter uh, 28 yes yeah yeah 300 yeah. 28 on the 850 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. so that helps yeah and then this this one we already saw earlier on and and uh, yeah and this was a 50 millimeter uh, with the uh, ISO was 100 uh, on the Z6 at 24/7. Uh, yeah, this is a quarter know. quarter second. So uh, yes, it was. Yep. yep. Yeah, quarter second into kind of third half second is kind of I find about the sweet spot for this intentional yeah. camera movement, or some people call it camera painting. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you know what's interesting about this one, Frank, is when I walked up and I was actually just heading to the car and I mm-hmm. saw the, the the lime green kind of um, undergrowth behind yeah. the trees and I thought, oh, I'm gonna go check that out and see what that looks like. Yeah. When I first saw the composition, it looked terrible. You know, I just thought, geez, you know that this this doesn't look that good, but maybe mm-hmm. it'll work good for a blur. Yeah. <laughs> and lo and yeah. behold, it worked. I think it worked yeah. well for a blur. But it's just, I, I'm just bringing it up because sometimes the compositions for a blurred image, they can look not so good in real time. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, as photographers, we don't really take a photo. It, we make pictures, Dave. Yeah. And, we're and making you're, you're, you made this. It, this is a, a yeah. made, uh, totally. and the colors, everything just works uh, perfectly on this. So. Can I ask about the image? Yeah. Fire away. We can. Yeah, I just would like to ask you, you know, the image is blurry and uh, which kind of techniques you use to blur the image? Uh, your uh, camera was on the tripod, slow shutter speed, and you moved during this sh- shutter speed, you moved no, the camera No, no tripod. Down. Yeah, no tripod. Okay. So I I move the camera when the shutter is open. Okay, up I, and down. I, okay. I pull the camera from up, from bottom to up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. no problem. But yeah, so yeah, no no tripod. Oh, okay. And then this one here is another great shot. It, uh, you've got uh, the old spirit bear. Yeah, spirit bear, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was up there for a week. I took a guy from Switzerland and a guy from Saskatchewan, and they they, they footed the bill for the trip. Wow, wow. Yeah, that's cool. Again, I mean, you, got, you got the shot for sure. You know, you got the yeah. shot. It's, yeah, it's great. Yeah, we we just found. I've only ever just seen the one. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, we had a good, good solid hour with them, and that that was that made the one week trip worthwhile. Yeah. Well, that's all you need to do. See it once. You know, you you know it. Uh, uh, you know, and uh, Mama's gone detecting, and she is a bear fanatic. She loves bears. Oh, okay. Uh, Robert so, Robert has donated a, a, a bear photo to Mama. We've sent it to her. So Robert okay. so was donated one, and and uh, so she just loves bears. As you can see, her her logo is a bear. And, oh, I see uh, that. Yeah. Yes, and I see that now. If I remember yeah. right, uh, she is from Iowa. Oh, okay. Uh, Iowa. Is yeah, that so. is that where she is right now? That's where she is right now. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah. 
Well, so, it can, it can, uh, I shipped to Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just had to say it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then this one here is another one. This is a long exposure. And uh, yeah. let's see, we're looking at uh, F13. Uh, where is it? How many minutes? Yeah. I think this one was three minutes, Frank, somewhere okay, around yeah, there. 2.48, yeah, 2.48, okay. yeah, almost three, yeah. 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 yeah, so probably would have been, you know, like I, I don't write down what polarizers and yeah. NDs that I use at the yeah. time because I'm changing them all the time, but yeah. I think this one might have been a polarizer and an ND stacked mm -hmm. just to take the edge off of the rocks Okay. Um, for the glare, but this just went into a local gallery in a 30 by 45 canvas, a big one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this Sombrio is great. It's mm -hmm. just, it's hard to go wrong with Sombrio. There's just so much yeah. to shoot there. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a cool one. And I think we, I'm just looking at some of the images, all the other ones except for this one. Oh, no, we've seen this one too. Uh, one, yeah. Earlier on, and then we saw the other one earlier on. I like this one too. It looks like he's, I think he's sleeping there, isn't he? Yeah, like he's just he's napping. Do yeah. Dozed off. Robert had yeah. one of these uh, in uh, out in Coquitlam, and it climbed oh, up wow. on a stump and 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 uh, was legs hanging down off the the log and going to sleep. So, oh wow! Yeah, wow! So that was cool. 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 Now, now the other one is I'm going to bring this up, and I want uh, um, this was submitted to us to 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 talk about. Um, she's a okay. new photographer, and maybe we can give her some ideas about uh, uh, some images. And, and uh, so I just wanted to um, bring them up, see if I can get them up here. Now, it's just oh, okay. it too big. Hold on here. Hold on. See if we can get that. Um, oh, da, 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 da. Where are we here? See if I get that in here. And it's just not going to. I thought I had it set up, but. Uh, give me a second. Let me see if we can maybe put us on one of the other cameras and see if that'll work. Come on, puppy. Uh, it's, it's, oh, you know what? I don't know why it's coming up here. Let me go. Let's uh, view as a gallery. Not coming up here. Hmm. Came up on this one here, and it disappeared. Oh, let me. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna open the file up here. Hold on, just bear with me two seconds. Uh, columns. Oh. Okay. gallery okay so now we're getting somewhere I know what we gotta do is just bring that a little bit bigger gotta come back to that come on I didn't have this set up uh, earlier on and it's giving me problems. Um, we can but, see the small one on the left. Yeah. Okay. So if you can see that the small one, you know. With. So yeah. If just just work from work that. With. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think I can make that any bigger. Maybe I can work. Yeah. It's hard. So anyway, so these ones. Uh, um, Brenda had submitted to us uh, for us to comment on and, and uh, um, just to give her some feedback. You know, she's a new photographer, so. Sure, hey, sure. Dave, you want to make a comment? I can, talk about yeah, the I can one? start for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah um, I think that the main suggestion that I would give is to try to aim for a more depth and dimension. Um, and what I would suggest on this particular image, because I, I just see a lot of like um, white on white, mm -hmm. is that if you could darken the back the background, then which you can select that in Lightroom, yeah. um, you can you can selectively 
choose parts of the image to reduce exposure or, or darken, uh, change the white balance of, um, to have the, to create more depth and dimension in the image where the, where the, uh, I'm just going to call it a flower for lack of a better term, mm-hmm. uh, is to have it pop more off of a dark background. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I think that I want to give some, bro- some broad tips um in regards to what i would do for Uh image processing Uh is again it's back to some you know some tonal range and um in depth and so that's that's where i would go with this one and and for her moving forward to other images yeah wayne what do we got well uh, can you hear me okay yep yep gotcha uh yeah i think it needs to pop a little more so uh she might have to add some uh, saturation uh you know she's got the rule of thirds down on the top image so uh actually maybe she should raise the uh center there just slightly uh above Mm -hmm. what she has but Mm -hmm. um you know i think that uh, a little saturation would uh, certainly go a long way there okay Robert? Well, I think uh, as a Dave, and uh, Dave already mentioned a little bit uh, more into the post-processing, so the image will stand up more. And uh, uh, for me, I don't know, uh, it looks like it's a macro macro uh, picture, or mm-hmm. but uh, for me, it's uh, just a frozen, a frozen flower is good composition but a little bit more needs a little bit more work on the post-production yeah i think you know uh you know there's some good comments there and, and what i can add to that too is it it is nicely the composition is a nice composition on that um i think what uh you need to do here brenda is i'm not sure on your camera if you're able to give it a plus one compensation as cameras try to to uh make a make your photo uh gray or 50 percent gray because they're saying you got too much white in it so it's trying to darken it so the the white really isn't a white it's a gray so if you add a plus one compensation if your camera can do it the the snow will become white so just just to keep it in mind for for future yeah uh, it's uh, if i can if i can add to it uh, always when she's shooting snow she needs to overexpose slightly the image so she will uh, have a real white colors yeah, yeah. And it's like 80% of the grain uh, camera exposing for 80, 18%. Yeah, that, that's where, yeah, add, overexpose it or add that one one to two stop yeah. uh, plus uh, mm-hmm. on that. So that'll make a big difference on the on the whites, Brenda. And then the and next there is one opposite, here. Opposite, opposite way when it's a black in the picture, she needs to underexpose for right, the real yeah. black. There you go. So there's a couple of good tips for you, Brenda. Okay, so this one here, it uh, again, uh, yeah. Wayne, you want to start? Uh, which one are we talking about? The, the one that uh, right, uh, one? The, the three circles here, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Again, uh, you know, uh, your uh, comment regarding uh, adding some uh, plus exposure to it would uh, bring the whites out. Um, you know, I, I'm having trouble determining exactly what the image is. I agree with uh, Rob there that it's probably a macro image, but I'm, you know, I'm not a big flower person, so I don't know exactly what I'm looking at here. Mm-hmm. But again, uh, she needs to make it pop. So there's various ways to do that. Uh, you know, maybe a little more color correction uh, in uh, Lightroom would help. Yeah, yeah, I guess it, yeah, definitely. Okay. If I can add to that, mm-hmm. uh, yep. it, uh, if it's a macro image, and uh, I don't know, maybe it's like fence, fence design, or I don't know what it is, but uh, I can see it's only one subject in focus, and uh, the other two are blurry. So yeah. For, yeah. for this uh, a macro image, I would uh, close down the aperture more for better depth of field and uh, better sharpness of all three circles but uh, i really like her uh, feeling for uh, for details 
Yeah, uh, yeah. It's good image. If it's gonna be all three circles uh, in focus and sharp, it's gonna look a little bit better. Okay. Yeah. No, I know it's it's tough. It's tough to see. Um, but you're right. I mean, not all of it is is is, uh, is tack sharp. There's some blurriness to it. You know. Now this yeah. one here is the is a much better one. Um, yeah. You know. I, I can add something to the other image too, if you like. The this one. Yeah. 40, Forty-nine twenty-nine. Yeah. Is that? I see my eyes still go to that little yellow spot that is to the bottom left of the right hand circle mm -hmm. so that yeah. small detail if you can imagine what that image would look like without that it would be just that little bit cleaner yeah just and that's that just just bit. above the g just off just the, above the, the g, g. Exactly. yeah that little just dark spot the g, there that, yeah. yeah that little yeah. like there's a little flower petal yeah, sticking yeah, up yeah yeah there's something is that those details or they help to take an image to the next level mm -hmm. and then the, the next image down it's the same thing with that black line on the left that's right my, yeah. eye, my eye keeps wandering to that black line on the left mm -hmm. i'd clone stamp that out yeah or just even just just bring that in a little bit you know just uh uh, or just take, take it that, out. Yeah, take that out of it. Yeah, whichever, yeah. whatever, whatever way yeah. that she would choose to do it. But that my eyes are wandering over there. Mm -hmm. the, again, I the compensation is good in this. You know, yes. you, you don't have yep. it in the center. It, everything's offset. Uh, it's a nice compensation. Um, again, just you know, give it a little bit of uh, overexposure. Plus yep. one uh, will whiten up those uh, that frosty flakes in there and uh yeah uh and that one is is sharp uh throughout so it's it's a it's a better one and then this one here i think the next one um it looks like it's whoop, what the heck i'm having real troubles it, it looks like it's a lamp head uh one on the bottom there so it, uh, oh yeah yeah um and you can't see it oh man i just um trying to bring hmm there the, you it's, got the image there now yeah it just um where to go it doesn't want to come up high enough there. okay so mm -hmm. it just yeah it's just coming up part way this the one below it doesn't come up high enough um and what the heck and I'm going to see if I can maybe, um, yeah, see it doesn't, yeah. Having, having issues here with this. Um, I haven't got it all set up. And uh, just another cam here. See if this one here, see if I can bring that up a little bit. Let's make it go this out a bit. Oh, hey, we're getting somewhere. Yeah. Um, so there's that one. We had that mm -hmm. one. That was uh, the three. So you can see this one here. There was a star, but these ones are a little zoomed in too much. So mm -hmm. that's the corner that we want to take off that dark spot on the left top corner. Brenda needs to be done. And then we've got this one here. Um, again, you can see the color is off. It's yeah. it's the the whites aren't white, um, and it's it's kind of almost like a warm tone to it. So, um, any other comments here? Well, I, just, I, I guess it's a it's a it's a good time to uh, reminder maybe to look at the background uh, right. when she's about to take your image. I'm. I'm having trouble determining if that's a building to the right and what is that to the left uh, midway through the image? Is that a building or or what? Yeah, so, yeah a little dark spot. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah dark I, spot. I, I, but, uh, I your agree eyes go there. Backgrounds crucial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, I think that I think that on this one. 
maybe even running the risk that the background's blown out or or it's close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it looks like it's potentially overexposed, but but eyes go to white first, so it tends to to me my eyes are going to the sky and not the bell. Yeah, yeah. So it it becomes it becomes. It's not complementary to the image; it's competing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, like, if that was a blue sky with puffy clouds, then it oh, wouldn't be so did, bad. Why did it disappear? Man, oh man! You know, like I say, it just uh... where'd it go? I'd oh, just my... like to say uh, I think it's a good try on her part, and nobody's uh, criticizing any uh, any of her. Uh, yeah. Uh, st- images there yeah uh but uh they're very good but um uh you know especially in that bottom one uh you have trouble determining what it is and where it is so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I think that uh you, you she should concentrate on that her back like uh Dave said her background and keep is, photographing. Is special. yeah <laughs> well that's it keep you know shooting. i mean i think it, it you really do need to um it's, it's a practice. I mean, photography is a practice. I mean, I think if everybody looks at their photos when they first started uh, to where you are now, there's there's a, a huge, huge difference in your photography. So just it's a learning process. You get out, you take photos, um, you have uh, people critique, you go to photo clubs and, and you learn. Uh, learning how to take a photo and, and uh, how to improve it, you know, once you've taken it, you know, that... Um, those are the key things, and and uh, and that's where channels like what uh, Dave has, what I have, and and Robert, you know, with the wedding photographer, and and it just helps to to all get together and talk about it to to help one another. So this is how we learn, you know, uh, in this uh, photography. So, um, oh, and our friend uh, Mike can't. He says he can't log in now. Why can't you log in, Mike? It just I just saw the thing on there. I, I've got the the link down there for you to to jump in. So, oh okay. So it just and Mama's uh, just gave us a says thank you guys for the helps. I'm very new and it was a point and shoot Canon camera. I will take your advice and keep experimenting. So and that's it. You know that and that's what we have to do yeah. is we it's experiment and, and learn. You know that uh, that we have to do and and. Uh, you're always welcome here, uh, Brenda. Any other photos, just send them off. Or anybody else that has some photos, want to submit them, and then we can critique them at the end of the end of these sessions. Uh, we'll try to have time, and and uh, you know after our guest, and yeah. So, but uh, that's that's pretty well it. You know, Dave, I want to thank you for coming on and and giving us the presentation. Yeah. I think we had a, a a great group. I think people enjoyed it. And, uh, you nice. know, come back again. We're, we're here next Tuesday. Sure. You know, you're welcome sure. to come in, uh, sure. jump on. And, and uh, uh, I haven't yeah. got a topic yet, but uh, we'll figure out something for next Tuesday. And, and uh, sure. um, yeah, and get people on here. So, yeah. Well, thanks a lot for having me. Yeah. Any other questions uh, while we're out uh, uh, from the chat, yes. uh, people out there? Uh, Karen or Dorothy? And then we had, I'm not sure if they're there yet, uh, Francis, you know, you were out there. Um, How many people sure did we have on all together, uh, Frank? It looked like, oh, oh Francis says, thank you. Um, I think we had uh, at top, I think we had about 17 people who were watching, which is great. Okay. You know, it was nice Excellent. to, to uh, get that many. And, and uh, Thanks, Mike. it's even nicer when, when people comment. And then, you know, so we can see what's happening, what their concerns yeah. and questions are in, in the chat. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, so it's just kind of nice. So, but yeah, we're yeah, welcome, you know, five. and, and Fran- Francis, uh, you know, I don't know whether the club could enjoy this. We can set something else up again and, and uh, uh, get this happening. But yeah, it's it's a fun, fun night. And, uh, you know, we go anywhere from one hour to what are we are. We're almost at two hours, you know, so <laughs> we're having so much fun that we're just going over. And uh, yeah. I still have one question if we have a time, like five minutes. So I still have one Fire away, Robert. Me. Sorry? Okay. Oh, yep, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very uh, interested in drone photography as well. But uh, I would like to ask Dave what it takes to 
to be able to fly drone, uh, which kind of license, how to obtain the license, and uh, sure. if it's worth it to buy drone, because I know there is many restrictions uh, about yeah. the flying. Hmm. Yeah. Wayne, uh, Wayne knows that also, because he's got the same problem with Vancouver Airport, as Dave has over in Victoria Airport. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, so I can, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can answer your question, but I won't be able to answer it fully in five minutes. In, in fact, <laughs> we could almost do a whole presentation one night on just drone and aerial photography. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, get back to Robert's question. So there's a basic pilot certificate through Transport Canada is that so you write an exam, there's no live test or anything like that. That allows you to fly in uncontrolled airspace. So uncontrolled, like in my world, would be like Souk or Port Renfrew. Basically, more than 5.6 kilometers from any airport. So again, three nautical miles or 5.6 kilometers from any airport. But in Victoria, or a heliport. Yeah, heliports are 1.9 kilometers. So, uh -huh. um, so like if you live in a metropolitan area close to an airport, you pretty much to do anything commercially with a drone, like actually make any money with it, you need uh -huh. an advanced certificate. And the advanced certificate allows you to fly in controlled airspace with permission. So I have to file a flight plan through Nav Canada and then it bounces to the Victoria Harbor Tower or to the Victoria Airport for approval. It takes 24, 48 hours. If you do it on a Friday, you won't get a weekend. You know, you got to do it on a Thursday to get a weekend flight. That's here. Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't know what it's like in Vancouver because I haven't flown a drone in Vancouver. What's it like, Wayne? Um, well, uh, again, I haven't fly, uh, filed any flight plans, but because uh, I don't go. Actually, my drone prevents you from uh, flying within, uh, uh, you know, that certain distance to the airport. Uh, uh, it comes up and it's, it, it actually gives you a warning right on it. Uh, yeah, DGI, I have to geo uh, unlock mine. So I have to yeah. file an unlock code with DGI. And then I have yeah. to sign off that I'm authorized and liable to fly in that unlocked geo zone. And then, and yeah, then I, took, I just took, uh, I just took my basic license. I, you know, right. I, perhaps I'll go for the advanced this year, but uh, the uh, basic uh, does me just fine. I mean, I can get out uh, near uh, UBC and uh, on the west side of Vancouver. Uh, without any sure. difficulty, um, and uh, you know that's basically what I'm doing. I'm not, uh, you know, up. <laughs> I only got mine in about uh, June or July last year, so uh, right. probably haven't flown it as much as I should. Uh, haven't done it after September too, so you know. <clears throat> uh, well, that I'm going to get out soon. A good thing to talk about, you know, coming in the future is is is, is the drone photography, because I know um, yeah. my wife's uh, uh, one of her school uh, um, teachers. Uh, her boyfriend is a drone photographer for movies, and he oh, flies okay. the big ones, the little ones, and and stuff. So yeah. I might yeah. be maybe talk with him and see if he'd be interested in coming and talking with us and yeah. and about yeah, uh, the drone. Fine. And, you know, like inspires and matrices and oh, stuff yeah. like that. Oh yeah, I mean the, the, the stuff, stuff that he flies yeah. is, is is incredible. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, you see the movies and things he's in. So, um, you know, and I'm sure you know maybe yeah. you know we can talk with him nicely and and uh, the, yeah. to to further answer Robert's question, when you go down the advanced certificate route, it's also it's a lot more studying, a lot more time consuming, and it costs about 1500 bucks in total with all the expenses in a course. Mm -hmm. So okay. there's a costing involved, but it's tax deductible if you have a business. Okay. Like if you're, if you're selling, if you're licensing videos from a drone or selling images from a drone, then you can write it off. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like it took me with studying and the, the flight test and the, the four day course it was a couple of weeks in August. No. 
and that's when I decided to do it was it was in August uh, it, there was no guiding business so I wasn't super super busy because the borders were closed and I thought well this might actually be a really good time to get my advanced license because yeah, I time. yeah for sure. so it was a good it worked out it worked out well but I had to it was like between 14 and 1500 bucks with all the costs involved like I'm talking about you have to have a vest a fire extinguisher a first aid kit you know, like maps and, and it's all, it's too much to get into right now. And then the but, drone. <laughs> oh yeah. And then they already have the drone. So, <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so yeah, the, Robert, the 1500 just, just beans, one thing, 1500 you know, beans, four grand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Taking so, your license, there's not a heck of a lot of difference between an actual pilot's license for a small craft and is, this. I mean, basically, no, it, you're uh, learning uh, weather and yeah. uh, uh, airport uh, situations the same yeah. as a licensed commercial pilot. Hmm. There you yeah, go. Yeah, same as like a Cessna, because I, I got my student pilot's license in a Cessna in 2005, and I decided to stop flying and pursue photography. That's when I just stopped because, like, I couldn't afford to do photography and flying because mm -hmm. I, just did, I just didn't make that much money. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like, it'd be like uh, uh, money was flying out the door, right? Mm. But so anyway, so Wayne is completely right. The, the, the main difference is that you don't have to do the test in a plane. Mm. But like all the studying for the meteorology and um, uh, navigation is a huge one, radio. Um, you don't have to have a radio license, but there are some questions on the exam about radio and telephony uh, but yeah i'd say probably you're 80 80 90 percent of the way to getting a, a cessna license <laughs> there you Wouldn't go you that, right, wow. <laughs> yeah it's yeah, not I yeah agree. No, and, uh, nothing you, is easy you anymore. have to know physics too newton's <laughs> law of, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. it just goes on and on and on yeah Oh yeah, thing, and then like, battery, and... battery drain in the cold, and there's all kinds of wild questions oh, yeah. on the. Uh, hey yeah, Dave, yeah. I have one more question that didn't come up in the chat. Is is do you uh, submit on your stock? Do you submit uh, videos as, as stock footage? I, I do. I just started doing that. I okay. submit to Shutterstock uh, separately. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I don't do a huge amount of video. Okay. Um, you know, I, I go in spurts, you know, I'll do a bunch of video for a week and I won't do video for a month. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm main, I love time lapses. Yeah. I, I still enjoy doing time lapses. Uh, but yeah, I haven't made much money off of licensing video clips for stock, but there, yeah, there's a shutter, bit of a shutter stock there. doesn't do that much in terms of, uh, uh, videos. I, I use another company that uh, I submit to, and uh, uh, it's it's actually it's pretty good. Um, and uh, you know, you can just you know anywhere okay. from six to sixteen second clips uh, is all you need. You know, some right. longer ones break them up, but uh, yeah, they uh, they're pretty pretty good to do. So I was just kind of curious to see if you've uh, if you submit to to that. Yeah, shutter so. shutter stock is pretty sleepy. Yeah, there, yeah, there's not yeah. there's not that much happening, and and interestingly enough on the stills for stock photography adobe is where the sales are coming from yeah i'm getting some from adobe too it, uh, yeah. but uh, yeah though they were they were with fotolia i had before but uh, uh right. by my number one is shutterstock um and they're um yeah they're that's my number one and videos come from it. I, I just don't forget. I just forgot the name, but uh, is it Artlist? Because uh, I submitted to Artlist once. No, in the uh, it is. Uh, just a sec here. Where'd it go? Uh, stock, 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 stock. I, I submit to Black Black Box uh, Digital and also Storyblock. And Storyblock and Black Box. Yeah, and Story and uh, yeah. So uh, submit to them, and uh, they just that's all they do is videos. They're just video companies that yeah. uh, uh, right. go in there, and, and uh, yeah. So and it's the same same process. You go, um, uh, you know, you gotta keyword them. You gotta uh, title yeah. them, description. Uh, but sure. the thing is, you know, like sure. you can you can have a a one minute video. Well, you can break that up into three or four 
different right. clips. Yeah. That's all you need is, and, is just, yeah. So. And that's where the drone comes in. Yeah. It's that, that the stock photography companies that are doing video, I, I from what I've heard, is that they're looking for more drone work mm-hmm. in an area. Yeah, well, it's, it's a new thing. So, so it definitely is. Thing. Yeah, if you've yeah. got them, you know, work on them. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But anyway, listen, I'm going to... Awesome. Say, say good night here. Uh, thank you again, uh, Dave. Uh, thanks, Robert, for jumping in. Wayne, thanks for coming in and, and commenting. Um, and just in the, the chat, uh, we had Mama's Gone Detecting. Thank you. Francis, thanks for coming along. And Sarah's mom, thanks for coming along. Mike was here. Photos by Wiley. Okay, thanks. Thanks for coming. And uh, who else we got? Mike Drozdowski was in here. Drozdowski is here larry leslie was here and karen thanks for coming karen um maybe see you again out uh on in the field somewhere uh dorothy uh wendell was here thanks for coming yeah, dorothy yeah. uh who else and wayne wilton was here hey yeah and who's that guy who's that guy yeah uh <laughs> tina pelly was here uh she still is here she's out in the living room yeah you know? And Ranjan Raj, uh, another Richmond resident, uh, first time joining, he came in, so that was kind of nice. Um, yeah, so, yeah, uh, let's see who else. Anybody else we missed here? Don't want to miss anybody. No, I think that should do it. So anyway, so awesome. it was a great night, awesome night, lots of good information. Um, this will be back up live uh, shortly. I'll uh, just have a quick boo at it, make sure. Uh, check it out. Uh, and before everybody leaves, give us the thumbs up. Uh, you know, it uh, really helps us along. Yeah. So, thanks, great. Frank. Thanks a lot, guys. And I'm gonna great say... presentation, Dave. It yeah. was uh, very enjoyable. Oh, thanks, and I just yeah. uh, I love the pictures, and I uh, I think my favorite picture of the whole evening was those uh, trees. The uh, oh, nice. towards the end there. Blurred yep. ones. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh, that's great that, feedback, that's great Wayne. Feature. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some people like it or they don't like it, but yeah. whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, exactly. it's yeah, not everybody's cup of tea, but yeah, it's it's yeah. It's, it's it's great, you know. So yeah. anyway, Dave, right. we'll talk yeah. and, and see you, uh, yeah, see yeah. you guys. Okay, and, bye, Dave. Thank you so yeah. much for info. Yeah, and yeah. We'll yeah. Stay connected. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Okay. I got, I got right. lots of more okay. questions, but uh, I'm gonna ask them in person. No problem. Thank you.